computer. Perfect. Hi, my name is Tasha Kramer. I am the Director for Community Health Improvement at the Partnership for a Healthier Carroll County. Hello, and my name is Bridget Bostick. I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist, and I work at Carroll Hospital as the Community Nutrition Educator. Welcome, everybody. I'm going to try and watch this so that I can see. I'm a registered um, see if, since we're live on Facebook, want to make sure that if you have any questions for Bridget, put them in the comments, I'll be able to see them and we can um, ask those questions. Uh, thank you for joining us today, Bridget, for our Wellness Wednesday. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, and today we're going to talk about carbohydrates and there's so many like myths and truths about what's, 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 good, bad, or anything like that. So I'm excited to talk about this. So let's just jump right in. And I'm gonna ask you some questions. Great. Uh, so the first question is, are carbohydrates bad for you? So this is a very typical question um, that I get asked. And also this is something that is all over, you know, our media platforms. Um, I see it all the time, people think that carbohydrates are bad. And the short answer is no, carbohydrates are not bad for you. They are good for you. It really is just about which carbohydrates are we having most often. Um, and those are going to be the whole food types of carbohydrates that are really, really good for us. Okay. That's good to know. Um, so you mentioned that the whole foods, so what carbohydrates are healthy for you? So the carbohydrates you want to have most often are going to be coming from your, your fruits, your whole fruits, your whole vegetables. Um, they're also going to be things like your beans and lentils. Um, nuts and seeds also have a good amount of carbohydrate in them. And then some of our low-fat dairy also has some good carbohydrate as well. Okay. Um, what carbohydrates should be reduced in a diet? So the carbohydrates that you kind of want to be more mindful of about your portion sizes um, are going to be what's called like our ultra processed or refined types of carbohydrates. And these types of things are going to be, you know, like white flour types of foods. So for an example, that's going to be something like, you know, your donuts or um, your, you know, white rice, um, your pastries all the little Debbie's, any type of pre-made cookies, like packaged cookies or cakes or candies. And then also things like, you know, your soda um, that has a lot of sugar in it. So, you know, nobody is saying that you can't have these types of foods. Um, and as a dietitian, when I'm counseling people, I would never tell anybody you can't have something. It really is just about moderation and trying to have the whole food carbohydrates more often and having the um, other processed or ultra processed refined carbohydrates less often. Okay, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. Will fruit make me gain weight? I hear that there's like, <laughs> you should, you shouldn't eat fruit because it's high in natural sugars or you shouldn't eat it. Like, what do, what do you think? So it really comes down to, you know, carbohydrates naturally are going to all break down to, into glucose units. The same thing as fruit, you know, breaks down eventually into glucose. Um, and that's our preferred energy source for our body, for our brain, and for our muscles. Um, fruit not only has, you know, some really good, healthy, natural sugars, but when you look at the whole package of a fruit, it also is going to have, you know, a lot of fiber, which is what we really need and it's also going to have vitamins and minerals and antioxidants. So what I would say is when you're comparing something like, let's say, a whole apple versus a donut, you're going to get a lot more nutrition out of that apple than you are going to get out of the donut. Mm -hmm. um, and no, you know, fruit is not going to make you gain weight. Um, fruit is very, very healthy and you should be having at least two servings of whole fruit a day you know, just to get those added nutrients that we need in our bodies. Is there certain fruits that are better than others that are, you know, higher in something that makes it healthier to eat than others? 
Um, there are certain fruits that are going to have, let's say, more fiber um, than other types of fruits. But what I always recommend is that people have a wide variety of different fruits and vegetables all the time, um, and particularly looking at different colors. So each color is going to be correspond to a different antioxidant or phytochemical. And those are the types of things that we need to help prevent cancer, for instance. So it's really about just having, you know, more diversity in your food groups um, and different colors that you're having. But, you know, I brought up fiber. So if we're looking at fruits that have more fiber, berries in particular are really, really high in fiber. Um, and let's see, we also have like our melon is going to be higher in fiber. Apples, as long as you eat the skin, are going to be a little bit higher in fiber. But really, all fruit is really good for you. Okay, that's, that's really good to know. Um, why are carbohydrates part of a healthy diet? So there are quite a number of reasons. I did touch base on a little bit about the, the vitamins, the minerals, the antioxidants, the phytochemicals that we get from our healthy whole food carbohydrates. Um, but like I said, it's our preferred energy source for our body. Um, carbohydrates are needed for our brain. If you've ever noticed that you haven't eaten in a while, um, you get like that fog, that headache. Um, mm -hmm. And that's because your brain's like, oh my gosh, I need that glucose. Um, I need that energy for my brain. Also, if you're planning on exercising, you know, you definitely need carbohydrates to sustain, you know, the energy that your, your muscles need. You, you know, you need to have a carbohydrate pre-exercise and after exercise plus just movement throughout the day, our, our muscles need that energy from glucose. And then also, you know, fiber is one of the biggest things that we need carbohydrates for. Um, and fiber helps with so many things in our body. Um, number one, it's going to help keep you full. So along with protein, fiber is extremely important to maintain fullness, especially if you're trying to maintain a certain amount of weight, or maybe if you're even trying to lose weight, you always want to make sure that you have fiber in your diet, because um, it might help prevent snacking later on. Um, and fiber really helps with control of your blood sugars. So when you eat something, let's say, like a lentil, um, or beans, or like a whole grain, like some brown rice, versus that donut, um, when you have something with more fiber, it's going to digest a lot slower and it's going to help prevent those spikes in blood sugar. So it actually helps with people who have prediabetes or diabetes, you always wanna make sure that you have fiber and fiber also helps to um, reduce cholesterol in our bodies. It has this amazing capacity to bind and remove cholesterol out of our system. So it can help with the prevention of cardiovascular disease um, and then also can help to prevent some symptoms of ulcerative colitis, diverticulitis, and even colon cancer and breast cancer. So fiber, 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 and then also having healthy bowel movements. You've ever noticed that you're constipated? I know it's like a topic we don't wanna talk about, but fiber might be the culprit, that and water. So up, the, up that fiber, I always say, have a cup of carrots every day, that's going to help you go. <laughs> oh, okay. That's, that's, that's really good to know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. So you brought up diabetes and prediabetes, you know, should, if, if I'm somebody who has diabetes, mm -hmm. you know, should I stay away from carbohydrates? No, absolutely not. Um, like I said, the, the fiber in those whole food types of carbohydrates are going to help prevent the spikes in your blood sugar, which is something that you want to try to avoid when you have diabetes. So, you know, you have, like I said, the, the whole grain, for instance, even a piece of whole grain bread. I always tell people when you're looking for bread, try to find a piece of bread that has five grams of fiber per slice. Um, that's going to help prevent the spikes in the blood sugar as opposed to having that like white wonder bread, which is definitely going to spike your blood sugar because it's made out of like that refined sugar. It doesn't have the fiber. So it breaks down very, very quickly in your system um, into those glucose units. And then it goes straight into your bloodstream and spikes your blood sugar. 
So that's why it's about having more of the whole food carbs with fiber. It's really fiber that makes such a difference. Okay, so I'm hearing lots of fiber. Mm -hmm. that, yep, that, fiber, that, fiber. Okay. <laughs> um, how much carbohydrate should I have in a day? So everybody is different. Um, so it always does bother me, you know, when you look on social media um, and the wellness industry, which sometimes can be toxic. Um, you know, everybody has their own views of how much carbohydrate we're supposed to be having, but it really should be individualized. Um, so if you are really, really curious, um, you really should speak to a registered dietitian because they're going to be able to do all the calculations and figure out what exactly are you looking for? Are you looking to lose weight? Are you looking to gain weight? Are you looking to have better um, endurance um, for, you know, your physical activity or event that you're doing. Um, but if I wanted to put like a, let's say for maintenance of weight or maybe even weight loss or just trying to watch your weight, um, typically I tell people about 45 grams of carbohydrate per meal for a woman and about 60 grams per meal for a man. Okay. And that's just like general, but it really just does maintain. depend. Mm -hmm. But it really does depend on your physical activity. If you're someone who's really, really active, you're exercising 300 minutes or more per week, you might need some more carbohydrates to maintain your muscle mass or build your muscle mass. Okay. So speak to a registered dietitian. That's, that's important. <laughs> Absolutely. That's yep. Um, so the last question I have um, is a really good question. And I... This is where I, I told when we talked about the fruit a little bit, you know, is should I restrict all sugar? Like, I feel like that's, we hear that a lot, like take, cut your sugar, cut your sugar mm -hmm. and you know, but that takes away your fruits and some of your vegetables. So what do you, what do you think for that? So I think the major problem in um, the wellness industry and in social media is that the term sugar and carbohydrate are synonymous. So people think it means the same thing when it's not. Um, what you wanna do, like I said in the beginning, is avoid or not avoid, reduce foods that have added sugar to them and have more natural types of sugar. You know, foods are gonna have natural fructose. They're gonna have natural glucose. It's perfectly healthy to have that. Like I said, we need to have um, those carbohydrates to sustain our brains and our muscle mass. It's our preferred source of energy. Um, so what you want to start looking at is look at your nutrition panel. You know, you turn over, you know, your box of whatever you're looking at. You're at the grocery store. Um, look for fiber. Look for added sugar. Something, you know, compare and contrast. Something that has more fiber in it, less added sugar. You want to go for that type of a product. Um, and that's just going to help your health you know, long term. But I don't think that there's anything wrong at all with having a cupcake, with having a donut, with having a piece of cake every once in a while. You know, it, one piece of cake is not going to make you gain weight. It's 10 pieces of cake, you know, over the week that may not benefit your health. Exactly. So all of these restrictive diets out there, there's so many that tell people you can't have carbs, you can't have sugar. Um, I think that it's toxic. It's our toxic diet culture that is going on right now. People sometimes want a quick fix. They think that, a, you know, a diet that restricts carbohydrates is going to help you. But I can say um, in my years of experience, people who restrict carbohydrates completely um, for weight loss, for instance, it doesn't work long term. And people end up, when they get off the diet, they end up gaining weight um, because you kind of go back to how you were eating before. Instead of learning a healthy lifestyle and learning balance and being mindful about eating, you know, it, the restriction, it just, it doesn't work long term. It really doesn't. So learning how to incorporate some of the foods that you enjoy. Heck, I like a piece of pie every now and again. I'm not going to not eat that. Um, and there's no reason to avoid something like that. It's just about moderation. Moderation, exactly. Mm -hmm. And I do hear that too, moderation. Mm -hmm. um, what do you, what would you say for someone who is very picky? 
um, and likes to eat the same things over and over again? I would say just try to have as much variety as you can out of the foods that you do enjoy. You know, let's say you like fruits a little bit more than you like vegetables. Well, incorporate lots of varieties of fruits to make sure that you're getting those antioxidants and phytochemicals. Um, you know, they're going to have similar things in them. And again, look for the ones that have higher fiber. Um, and it's okay, you know, not everybody's going to like everything, especially kids, you know, um, especially people who kind of grew up on a meat and potatoes type of diet. They're not going to necessarily like asparagus or, you know, certain things that I might like. And that's fine. Just try to get variety in all types of carbohydrates to ensure that you're getting um, adequate nutrition. Earlier, you mentioned about getting some carbohydrates before and after you exercise. Mm -hmm. Is there certain times of the day that you should be doing that? Like, you know, don't eat carbohydrates after four or don't eat them after seven, or does it matter what time of day you eat them? No, nope, not really. Research shows that, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. It's really about overall what you're doing. You know, are you drinking enough water? Are you getting physical activity? Are you eating a well-balanced diet? You know, it's, it's encompassing so many different things of wellness, not just, you know, specific things or specific foods that are going to make you healthy. It really is about, um, being healthy overall, you know, um, no, it's not really about timing. If you're specifically exercising for a reason, you want to gain muscle mass, then you can get a lot more picky, but then you really need to seek out help from someone who has a lot of experience to be able to guide you correctly. Okay. That's good. Thank you. Are there any, are there any, is there anything you want to add or? Anything? I guess I just want to stress the point of um, let's try to remove this diet culture from, um, you know, our minds. Uh, it, it can be a stressful time right now where, you know, it's the winter months. We're not able to get out. Gyms are closed. What are we going to do? We're worried about our weight, all these things. But, um, you know, just focus on being mindful about your intake. Think about eating like the plate method as silly as that sounds. It really does work. When you're looking at your plate, half of your plate should be some non-starchy vegetables. Um, that's going to be things like any cruciferous vegetables, like your broccoli, your cauliflower, your greens, um, asparagus and tomatoes, um, artichokes, lots of beans, like your green beans, things like that. Um, and then a fourth of your plate, you want to have your nice lean protein. So that's going to be like your fish or your chicken. Um, and then a fourth of your plate is going to be your starchy carbohydrates. So things like your potatoes and your corn, your beans and lentils, um, and kind of try to stick to that to make sure that you're getting good balance in your diet. Okay. Well, thank you so much. It doesn't look like we have any questions on Facebook, um, <laughs> but we can always, if you have questions for Bridget, you can always uh, email us at the partnership and we will get them over to her so that she can um, we can get those questions answered for you. Thank you for joining us today and have Absolutely. a great, great holiday. <laughs> All right. Bye everyone.